Hello YouTube, this is part two of my adjustable J-pole. Now this is how I did this, it's turning out pretty good. Uh, I, I'm liking it, I'm liking it. Um, I do want to point out a few little tips when you do this. Um, remember in my part one video, I said you have to have a dowel rod because we've got to bend this steel rod. So what I suggest you do, so like that, is don't try to measure it and cut it. Do the bend first, then come back and then measure your length and cut them accordingly. So do the bend first, like 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 I did here, and that, that and the bend's not real crucial, but do the bend first, then come back and then you know cut cut the lengths you need. Okay, that's what I would recommend. Now, what I did here is, even though it came out to be, I don't remember what it was, 18.2 or something, I just made, I just did this, this one here, from the tip of here to the bend, I have it about 18 and a half inches. This piece here, from the tip of here to the back here, is 6.5 is what I did, okay? Now, I've been kind of playing around with this, and it's looking like this might just work. I'm going to have an adjustable. i got to do more playing, but you can see I did about 6.5 there. And you measure from the back side of this bend to here. So I bent it first, then I did, then I did my cutting. I did 6.5 inches here, I cut out the Dremel. Then I did 8 from here. To here, I did 18 and a half, cut it with the Dremel. So do it that way. Now, the trickier part was soldering on. I used those shaft collar, and I'm going to get really close here. We're going to try to get this so you guys can see this better. So let's see if we can, let's see if we can get this really good here. So you can kind of see what I did here. Okay. So, like I said before, you're going to need to rough up the metal or it's not going to stick, okay? So, I took a Dremel tool, and I don't know if you can see that or not, but I roughed up the, the collar itself and then on the connector also. I don't think it's showing that real well. Maybe I got too much light here, glaring. Yeah, it's kind of hard to really show that, but you can kind of see it right there where I roughed it up with a Dremel. And I soldered the center pin to this shaft collar. Again, rough up the shaft collar really good. Then I took a piece of leftover wire from here that I cut off. And then I bent it and I soldered it to the outer part of the connector here. And then on the other end, you can kind of see that I soldered it to the uh, shaft collar. So one is ground, and you can't really see that, but the other one is center. So now when I adjust this, when you go to solder it, what I recommend you do is you put these on the antenna first, tighten down the Allen wrench screws, make sure they're even, then solder it. That way you know when you're, when you're done soldering it, these are gonna be even, meaning One's not going to be higher than the other one. So put them on first, then tighten them with the element screw, then solder your connector on. Actually, before you even put them on here, take your Dremel tool and rough everything up first on the on the connector. I didn't I didn't do that as good as I should have. So I'm telling you now, rough everything up on the connector and on the shaft collars. Now, obviously, we want it so we can adjust it so you have the screws facing out. And how I did it here is I soldered it on the side for the, the center. And then, again, on the bottom, I bent a piece. You can't really see that, but I bent it. So, but put the shaft, put them on here. Make sure they're, they're, they're straight, they're equal in this way. Equal that way. Then tighten them down. Then do your soldering. That way you know that you got it straight. That's how I did it. But now when I loosen these up, this is solid. So it's, when I slide this up, it all goes in uniform. So it works really well. And I've been playing around with this, and I am, I am, 
I, I it's working a little better than I thought. I gotta double check my measurements and re you know check everything, but meaning uh, my nano VNA. But I've been getting some pretty good readings on this. And yes, when I did adjust this up here, I had really high, like SWR of five, and I put it all the way down here, and I pretty much from 460 megahertz up to 470. I had 1.2, 1.3. The highest I think I saw was 1.5, I believe. I'm going to double check that. I'll do a video on that. But I need to double do some more double checking. I want to make sure I got my nano calibrated really good. So I'm going to recheck everything. But that's what it looks like so far. But when I did have this way up here, my stop yards were through the roof. Um, so this, this adjustment seems to be working. And I was thinking, this ain't very, let's zoom this back out. This ain't a very big, very, now remember, this J-pole does not need any ground plane rods. Usually with antennas, as if you're familiar with it, you have ground plane rods that come off the side here. But this J-pole don't need that. So what I'm thinking I might also do, if this works out the way it's, it's been working out so far, I'm going to I'm gonna make a special bracket. Now I'm going to use this on my uh, mobile. I'm going to see what happens if I make this into a mobile antenna. Because, you know, I don't need no ground plane. Now the roof of the car might interfere, but that's what my you know my analyzer will be able to tell me if I can if I can't adjust the SWRs within reason that might be because of the metal roof of the car but I'm thinking of modifying a piece of plastic for a holder coming off this actually the holder I came up with to do my SWR testing is a PVC pipe that goes over the connector here you screw your coax you put it, th it through the um, uh, your coax through the PVC pipe and then it fits right over here. I slotted the PVC pipe and I have a hose clamp. When you tighten it, it holds this really good. I'll show you that in the next video. That's how I'm going to be holding this thing. I think I can apply that to my magnum mount. Um, now, of course, I'll get different coax because uh, magnum mount antenna, the ground of it is the part of the magnet. Well, I'd have to get in, in another coax, but that's not a big deal. But I might try to try this for a mobile, see what happens. Um, but at any rate, that's how I made this. Really simple. Um, and they, you know, 3 dB gain is what, they're, what they say. Now, uh, of course, mine might be a little different because what I did here, but it should be that. So we'll let you know. This is part two. Uh, part three, I'm going to have the analyzer hooked up, and we're going to do some playing around. And uh, so stay tuned to part three coming soon. Any questions or comments, please post them down below. Please subscribe. Thank you, and have a good day.